Midsummer, directed by Ari Aster, director of last year's film uh, horror film Hereditary. Uh, this is a follow up to that. It's a, not really a sequel, but it's a it's his next movie, and it follows a group of friends who travel to Sweden for a festival that occurs once every ninety years, and then find themselves in the clutches of a pagan cult. It stars Florence Pugh. Jack Rayner, uh, William Jackson Harper, and Will Poulter. Uh, and we both saw it. Yeah, we sure did. So I did not see, or I saw Hereditary. You have not seen Hereditary. No, but I was excited as hell for this movie because I thought it looked real, real goddamn good from the trailer. Mm-hmm. And I was just so excited to see an original movie, mm. regardless if it's, you know, based on whatever the hell folklore. The point is, it's it's not comic book or a book or a TV show or anything. Mm-hmm. There's so few of these a year now that look any good. Mm-hmm. And this looked very, very promising. I'll say this much. It is it is mostly original. Like, for the most part. Right. You were right. I mean, like, you were right in expecting an original movie, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> see, well, let's just get into the nitty gritty. So... My big issue with this movie, which uh, right off the bat, I didn't love it. I mm-hmm. didn't love it at all. Uh, Me neither. The premise was extremely promising. Oh, yeah. That's what really bugs the shit out of me. And I think there's kind of this tendency with original movies especially where, oh, you've got the the premise and there's the ideas that came – the ideas came through. It's not like it fell with a flat thud. It, mm-hmm. I got what you're trying to say. But it's it's – as I've said a number of times, it's the journey from point A to point B, and unfor- unfortunately, the slow burn aspect for me wore out its welcome in the second act. It's the, tedious. The second act was painfully boring, mm-hmm. which is crazy because with such a wild premise, there was so much you could have done. And this movie had absolutely no business being two hours and what 20 it's, minutes yeah i was Something gonna say crazy it's like more that? than it's two and a half pretty much it's more than two and a half this movie's flaws reminded me so much of bad times at the el royale mm-hmm. that also had for different reasons like this didn't have flashbacks but they, they both wore out their welcome in the second act started very strong and then By the time it was over, I thought, Jesus Christ, this didn't need to be this long at all. Mm -hmm. Why couldn't you have made this a regular, you know, hour, 45 minute movie? See, that's what I thought. Because even at two hours long, Hereditary felt like there was no moment wasted and every scene built to some sort of reveal or twist. Whereas this, it suffers mightily from what I would say are an excess number of scenes and elements and even plot threads that... And characters that I wouldn't even say need to necessarily be there. It ultimately drags the pacing down and inflates the running time uh, to a half hour longer than I I agree. A half hour longer than it needed to fully be. Where do you think most of the problems were? Like, which, well... Without talking about spoilers, you mean? I mean, talking generalities. Like, did you think that uh, maybe the Christian, the, the boyfriend character, Florence Pugh's boyfriend, whatever, I don't know the actor's name... Uh, do you think maybe he, he had too many roommates, maybe? Yeah, there's a subplot involving a thesis paper and like right, whether yeah. or not and like w- someone's copying. And I'm like, this... We'll get into that because I thought that was... I agree with you. That I thought that was an entirely stupid plot well, point. it is especially considering where everything goes. Because at the end of the movie, you're like, yeah. so none of this really mattered then. Okay, yeah. There, but there's, again, there- like, there's this... I wouldn't necessarily say this is a bad movie, and I wouldn't not recommend it because I do think there, because clearly there are people. That I, I like would say it. I, I would say I wouldn't. Well, because I don't fucking know what people like. Well, like, I, I, okay, I don't know. It depends on who we're talking to. I but could say I didn't really like it, but like no, I there are things yeah. I like about it. Like it looks very good. The acting, for the most part, is very good. It's made very well. The ideas, like you said, the ideas get across. It's just. The intangibles didn't work for me. Like the pacing didn't work. The seri- the sequence of events weren't very en- enthralling. And then it's just there are other there like we said like there are ancillary elements that just don't fit together. I think part of my problem is this movie had a weird thing going on where it's a horror movie, right? And horror is supposed to be about suspend. Like you're supposed to really have good suspension of disbelief for horror movies. But at the same time, it kind of touted itself as, 
a realistic version of a horror movie. Mm -hmm. So when you set it up as this hyper real world, and then you have these er these characters acting like complete idiots, mm -hmm. and I and it leaves you thinking no one would react like that in this situation. Mm -hmm. You've kind of lost me. You've lost me in the way that. I thought you were trying to make this, uh, for I guess in layman's terms, a smart horror movie instead of like popcorn entertainment. Because it sets up this very somber, like serious, real world, but then it's just bullshit the way they react to things. I just sat there thinking, there's no way people would react that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, back to what you were saying about it looking good, I feel like that's almost a weird problem that's uh, you uh, not unique or sorry, it looking good by itself isn't enough. Yeah. And that's not a unique problem to either indies or blockbusters. Mm -hmm. you, the way I'd put it is this. It's uh, too much CGI in blockbusters is to too showy cinematography in indie movies. Yeah. You know, there's it, a lot it, of it feels like, like that's their version of. The indie version of too much CGI is just ooh, look at whoa, look at the weird camera movie and all move mm -hmm. it, uh, movement and all the dissolves, man. Mm -hmm. Oh, this shot's upside down. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a river, man. Is it like a river to like sticks? So much d analogies and that's, metaphors, man. That's the other thing with Hereditary is like it was it was made better in my opinion but it cuz it did more with less like yeah. i feel like it, they made that money they made the money they made the movie for less money i think at least looks that way i mean they did so much like the camera movements and that were so much more simple and like the imagery was just a lot more scary and i know it's a different kind of horror film like this is more in line with like a wicker man than like whereas with hereditary it's like a lot more of like your straight laced like exorcist you know type film right but yeah it, it's yeah yeah i know what you mean where it's, it is very pretentious with its imagery at points right uh so what do you think of the characters uh mainly danny and christian uh, danny who's played by florence Pugh, and christian who's played by jack rayner right they do the job i think what's what's uh supposed to be what's the word um the point that's supposed to be made, I think, is made. Like, you're really only supposed to like Danny, played by Florence Pugh, and that's not really spoiling anything. Uh, her character, like, she is the protagonist. She has damage. She has baggage. She has shit that she's had to deal with, and we see her deal with it in the course throughout the course of the film. Right. She's really kind of the audience up until a point. Everybody else is, is they again, I say, like, they, they do their job because... You're not really supposed to like anybody else. And they do their yeah. job in like you being like, these characters are shitty. Like, they're assholes, kind of. <laughs> okay, but see, I um, I kind of had a problem with the boyfriend character. Mm -hmm. I, found, like, I know you're supposed to hate him, but he was also just kind of boring. And I think there's a fine line between a boring protagonist or a, a boring antagonist versus a character who you don't like but you still find intriguing. Mm. You know? And I kind of got that vibe from him. And I, I, it just felt like a slow burn. Like, just kill him already. Yeah. Like, in fun horror movies, right? Mm -hmm. Not in the realistic ones. In fun ones, you're just generally like, get, kill him already. Yeah. Like, okay, kill him. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that too. <laughs> from Dumb and Dumber. Yeah. Exactly. But it's like, on with it. Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit of that. Uh, I kind of found Danny annoying. Oh yeah, just like how can you be this much of an idiot? Oh, like, like yeah, I he's see what you mean. so he's so shitty to you. Mm -hmm. Like, come on. Yeah, yeah, I get that. It's it, it's almost it, it kind of it's irritating to watch mm -hmm. at, at times. Yeah, there and that yeah, I agree with you. But it also, however, goes what's her that? her performance? I thought was better. Oh yeah, she's like, great. like Jack Rayner is kind of so so. Yeah, but yeah. I, I don't really think his character is written all that well mm -hmm. i think she had a little more personality yeah she has a lot to do yeah well yeah. she's she's got a lot of shit to go through yeah quite um, so i i found her obviously more sympathetic but at the same time kind of like irritating mm -hmm. just a little bit mm -hmm. uh but i was i was on board for the first act because i thought all right so where's this gonna go and but the problem is and we'll get to this in spoilers in just a second the 
the shift from the first act into the second one, it's very, very jarring, Mm -hmm. which is cool because it it works for a second, but then immediately after, it's followed up by two or three weak scenes, and then the movie slows down, and then it starts to suck for me. Mm -hmm. So, do we want to get into spoilers? Yeah. All right, so the first act turning point that we're talking about is... Uh, so this is spoiler time. Uh, it's the scene where they're at the cliff and they see the old dude march up the cliff. And what does he do? Commits ritual suicide and jumps his ass off the cliff. Mm-hmm. But he's not done yet because he lands and breaks both of his legs. So here come the Gallagher's, <laughs> you know, that come with the their, their, yeah, sweet, Swedish Gallagher. Yeah. <laughs> we couldn't find any watermelon, so we're using heads today. Yeah. So the Swedish Gallagher's come out and smash this dude's head to oblivion. They form a conga line. Yeah. And so my whole thing is, okay, that's a very, very good scene Mm -hmm. on how to be like, wow, shit has just changed. I thought it was a very good shift. So it went from, oh, we're just doing acid. Oh, by the way, Danny. Oh, yeah, I better do acid after my family died. Otherwise, my friends won't like me. (laughs) That, that's where I d- decided I kind of disliked her as a character. Mm. A little bit. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, you know, I'm just sitting there thinking, don't be such a pushover. Who gives a shit? Mm-hmm. You know? But anyway, I have a big problem with the scene, the way they react. They're just kind of like, oh, no, that was scary. <laughs> except, except the one British couple is the only uh, ones who have the real realistic reaction. Like, oh, what the fuck was that? Mm-hmm. Like, they're, they're all up in arms. The rest of them are just kind of... They act like that. That's, like, that's fucked up. <laughs> yeah. But the rest of them just kind of sit back like, oh, no, that that's crazy. It, it was almost like they just looked at a gross photograph. Mm-hmm. This, this guy has just been, like, jumped, like, killed in front of you, mm-hmm. essentially. <laughs> you know, and they're, like, later they're, like, in their bunks, like, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Like, they walked yeah. past a car accident. Like, yeah. no, this is bigger than that. It's like, the fucking, like, it would have been one thing if they both jumped off and died, but, like, the second dude didn't even work. They had to, like, f- they had to, like, fucking, <laughs> they had to, like, improvise. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, get the mallet. <laughs> it's like, Jesus, they went all fucking Harley Quinn on his ass. Though I will say, that effect, the the head, head explodey effect Good yeah. stuff. But yeah. But you know what? Uh, we're going to do a new in-review segment uh, because we had such a problem with that scene. This is how we think that scene probably would have gone if these people had realistic emotions and thought processes. So here's what we'd like to call a new segment that we're just going to simply call rewrites. So here we go. It's that, it's the, to give you guys context, it's that same scene where the guy's jumping off to commit ritual suicide. And now we will assign parts. Robert will be playing the parts of Christian, Danny, and the British guy. <laughs> I will be playing the parts of uh, Pella, Josh, and the narrator. So, we begin. Exterior, mountains, day. We see a man jump off a cliff. He lands with a thud. Other villagers come out with mallets and bash his head in. Danny starts to vomit. Christian and Josh look on in horror. The other two British characters, I forgot their names, start to shout at the villagers. Josh gathers the two British people, Christian and Danny, in a secret football-style huddle. All right, guys, here's the plan. We're going to meet in secret tonight and get the fuck out of here. What about Mark? Yeah, he can come too. Ready? Break. They all clap their hands in unison. Oh, speaking of break, I think we need to break up, Christian. You suck ass. Yeah, fair enough. Pella, that's the name of the Swedish roommate, looks on at their circle curiously. Hey, what are you all doing over there? We're just talking about Tom Cruise and Burger King. You know, American stuff. But aren't two of you British? Oh, Simon, that's the name of the British guy. Any anyway, oh, that's narrator's note. Anyway, back to the story. Oh, bloody hell. Um, close enough. Oh, okay, I got it. I'll see you all in the village later then. Oh, make sure to do more acid before you come back. We will. Josh turns back to the circle and shakes his head no. And scene. Oh, th- 
thank you. Thank you all. <laughs> Too kind. Right. Okay, the point I'm trying to make <laughs> with with that uh with that unnecessary little detour detour is if they saw that shit, they'd be like, "What the fuck is this? I'm out of here." Mm-hmm. Let's like gather supplies, <laughs> food, Let's make smoke signals. Yeah, like <laughs> I know that they're like they kind of implied that's a long drive, but like mm-hmm. that's when you go into survival mode. You're like, "All right, we got to get the fuck out of here and report this place. Make sure this shit gets like shut down. Like this is fucked." <laughs> yeah, yeah. And their reaction is just like, "Oh, you know." The oh, that was relativism. No, you know what I mean. Deal, yeah. Well, that was their thing. You know, in their cult, like they might think it's weird that we watch, like, you know, everybody loves Raymond and Big Bang Theory, <laughs> and we think it's weird that they commit ritual suicide. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. <laughs> Welcome to the. Uh, oh God, what was I going to say? The fucking false equivalency awards. <laughs> yeah, like that. That was such a. And the other thing was like they set these up as real people mm-hmm. who have real thoughts, but no, Josh is like. Josh is just basically sits there thinking, oh, this will be really great for my thesis. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what? And that's, see, the whole thesis thing, like, let's get into that. Well, that whole thesis, yeah, the thesis. They all, su- so spoilers, they the, all the, die. The thesis subplot uh, is so bad, you, you could almost say it, 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 it's, it's like something that almost rhymes with thesis. Ah, there you go. <laughs> No, it's like the thesis subplot. <laughs> More like the thesis subplot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean it. <clears throat> it goes nowhere because they all die. So it, and I, I kind of figured they would. So I'm like, why do I care? Why, why should we care? Like this should be a survival movie. I shouldn't, or it should be what Ari Aster really pitched it as, which is this is a breakup movie. And I think at its core, it's like some of that stuff works, but there's so much in the way of that. Like there's so much like, oh, you know, we want to get laid and no drugs and, you know, anthropology theses. And I'm like, this is not, this is filler. This doesn't need to be here. And then I just started to think about the whole anthropology plot in general. And I'm like, that's really all that Josh's character functions as, is to be like this foil or even an antagonist for Christian. So I'm like, that character can fucking go. Yeah. And really, what 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 fucking uh, purpose does the Will Poulter character have in other, Mark, other than well, be, to, uh, be the, the, what do you call it, the comic, comic relief? relief. And, and the other thing about that was he had a couple funny lines, but after a while, it was just kind of like, zoopity doop de doop I'm mm-hmm. the comic relief. <laughs> hey. He just says... I don't know. I just didn't find a lot of his lines funny after a while. And no, I, the the Josh thing, yeah. You know what I also didn't <coughs> like about that shit when when Christian just says, "Oh yeah, I, uh, I'm writing my thesis about it." Mm-hmm. You know, and they get in that whole spat. You can't steal my thesis, bro. And mm-hmm. he's all, "Watch me." I just felt like that was just so late. Like it was just so lazy that mm-hmm. Josh, like what other reason was there for Josh to steal it other than he's a jerk? It just felt very forced. Yeah. I think you and cut out those characters, you cut out Josh and Mark and you make Christian the sole roommate of Pella. You, you focus the story back on to him and Danny and their relationship, which is what the movie's supposed to be about. And you cut out all the bullshit and you, and most importantly, you reduce the runtime by probably 10, 15 minutes. That's a very good point. And mm-hmm. you know what the other thing is? That only strengthens the focus on Pella, too, mm-hmm. by getting rid of those other characters. Right. Because the, he's Pella plays a really important part in the movie, obviously, as it turns out that his parents were killed or whatever, and we're assuming by the cult. Yeah. Just, Not in a car accident. Yeah, just like with... Uh, Danny's parents. Who, it's like I guess they're killed by this cult, and the sister did it or some shit. There's a lot of unintentional comedy in this. I but I can't tell. Like there's a part at the end, like a part at the very very end. Like there's a part they got some real big laughs. But like there's even a bit at the very end where like they finally put all the bodies of everybody in the fucking the pyramid thing, the temple, and like yeah. they give the fucking dudes that like sacrifice themselves like. The, the you from a tree will make you feel no pain. And, like, he catches on fire and, like, immediately starts screaming. I'm like, ah, it didn't work. <laughs> and I was yeah. like, come on, man. Some of this is just hilarious. And, like, the sex scene, which is, like... Real weird and... Weird and, like, morally, like... I just didn't get it. Like, there's so many times in this where I lost the director. Like, it's like I said, like... like what are you, what are you direct- getting at here? Yeah, it's like... 
it's like you're going on a it's journey like, oh, with the it, director's it, it's, hand. It's very artistic. That, see, that's yeah. what I meant. It felt very showy. Like, yeah. look at this. There's nudity on screen, yeah. but, it, but it's tasteful nudity. <laughs> so Meaning that the actors I'm just, are all over 50. Whatever. That's <laughs> the, but that's beyond the point. I'm just saying, like, it, it felt very showy just to be... Oh, look at this weird scene. But it's art, man. So you can't question my dumbass scene that's like like awkward. Made not- the audience my audience was fucking dying laughing. And it only made the th- it only made it more awkward because it's like That's what, what I the mean. Hell? It it felt very pretentious. Yeah. It's just too like like we say. Also, I think you know. I think it was my least favorite scene of all, hmm. where Danny has one of her thirteen crying fits, and you know, a couple of them are justified. Obviously, like when she gets the call. Well, well, so, uh, well, uh, young lady, uh, your parents are dead. Mm-hmm. Uh, all of them been killed. See, like, mm-hmm. okay, that I get. You're, you're not going to be in the best shape. Hey, she's 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 a wreck. Oh, but yeah. but the part at the end where I don't even remember she wins her dumbass dance recital. Mm-hmm. <laughs> cool song though. Oh, the Maypole dancing competition. Yeah. Thing? Anyway, so she wins the dumb dance competition. So now she's accepted by the cult people and loves them. You're my family now, and I get the the idea there. Mm-hmm. The idea is that cults are dangerous because they appeal to people. Who uh, are vulnerable? Yeah, vulnerable and have some sort of weakness or lack in their life, or are lacking something in their life. Mm-hmm. And she obviously lacks love and support because her family's dead and her boyfriend's a dick. Mm-hmm. I get that whole thing. That whole thing. That whole scene where she's crying and then everyone's chant crying with her. Yeah, that's just annoying. I that was like, was weird, I, I man. thought this is annoying as hell to watch. I mm-hmm. want this scene to end. Oh, that's the point. It's supposed to make you uncomfortable. But this movie's <laughs> already bored me. If you're supposed to bore me to death mm-hmm. and make me annoyed, what the fuck is the point of this shit? That's the thing. Is we say like movies. A lot of movies are like the director holding your hand on a hike or like through a journey. Like sometimes there comes a movie like this where it's like the director holding my hand through like a haunted house. Yeah, like fog everywhere. I'm like. Where the fuck did you go? Like a couple times. Like, come on, man, I lost you. A, cu- yeah. a couple scenes, especially towards the end. Also, that that scene. We drove Simon to the train. Yeah. Give me a oh, goddamn yeah? break! <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sure you did. You were with with what car again? Yeah, yeah. Oh, we the, drove the him to the train. Mm-hmm. You guys are, are are you guys gonna buy this story? I think I'm gonna trust the people who bash people's heads in with mallets <laughs> and force you to take acid all day. Mm-hmm. I mean, why wouldn't you trust them? <laughs> the, uh, I, I don't think they believed him, but it just seems so obvious. I'm just saying, with the ritualistic suicide, then people just magically disappear, and everyone's uber creepy at this mm-hmm. place. I just wasn't buying it. It should have been a much later development. Yeah. And it, it's also, speaking of like later developments, the whole twist with Pella isn't really that you know, surprising. Mm-hmm. Well, it's like the Wicker Man. It's well, like he, the same deal. Yeah, he seemed he seemed kind of off from the get go. Yeah, I mean, it's and there's l- that there's that little scene, you know, back at the dorm room or whatever, mm-hmm. where he kind of talks one on one with Danny, and he he's kind of like seems like he's hitting on her a bit. It's like it felt like the Wicker Man. Like that was the whole yeah. twist in the Wicker Man. Is like, oh, he was lured there because he, he was going to be yeah. the sacrifice for that year's celebration. It's like I've seen that before. Yeah. Also with Christian. Hey, people who totally murder people, can I get more of that tea laced with drugs? What's in it? Oh, more shit that'll make you go crazy. Okay. Like, See, why do they keep... Like, I would... Like, I'd be doing my damnedest not to touch or eat or drink, like, any of that shit, man. So there's, like... I thought of it as, like, he was just, like, willingly, like, fuck it, I don't care anymore. Like, and that... It's not explained I mean. very well at all. Well, that's his problem, is... His character just exists to just be a, a, a douche. To, and to get killed by yeah. his very pissed off girlfriend. Yeah. Well, that was the other thing. And by the end of it, like, what, what am I supposed to be, like, rooting for her? Like, she sucks now. She's she's one of those shitty cult people. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, it's a no-win situation. Like, what would have made the movie even more tragic is, like, if he was actually, like, full-on, like... Assault, like sexually assaulted by this cult, and like she saw it and like thought it was something else. 
but well, then they but paralyzed him. technically, and, he took love potion number nine. But that's what but, I mean. Like, if uh, it wasn't, like, if it wasn't consensual and, like, she thought it was and that, that's the tragedy. is like, no, I can't talk and say, like, I was fucking, like, these yeah. people did this to me and, like, she thinks it's one thing. But it's really just, it's the breakup movie that Ari Aster wanted it to be. And, so again, some of it works. I love the, uh, well, I don't love the opening scene. The opening scene put me in a place, a very bad place, and similar to Hereditary, where I was like, "Yep, this is this is exactly see, that, what I felt." Because like really fucking graphic. Oh, because like, you see the parents are dead in well, the just like room the, because of the they well, have the gas tubes tied yeah, to their face. Yeah, like just it's real fucked up. Like God, that's gross. See, that's my problem. Is the first act was really promising. Okay, I thought, wow, we're going we're going this route. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's how you're gonna play it. Let's see how this plays out. And then you get to the uh, the camp, whatever the fuck it is, mm. and then you get the idea that it's kind of weird, and then the mallet thing happens, and then you think again, oh shit, so now we're elevating it again. But then the second act, like there's the scene where they're all sitting down for dinner, and again, it felt very showy. Ooh, look at how we shoot all the people mm. uh waiting their turn to sit and grabbing their knives. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter that it's well, you know, it's a well-executed, like, scene cinematographically. It's It's, gotta go. It's boring Mm -hmm. as a narrative scene. It's overstuffed. Why do I need to see all that shit like that? Why do I care about the Oracle? Yeah. Like, that character doesn't serve any purpose. It's just it's just atmospheric filler, and are, it's are, fine. Are you talking about Sloth from the Goonies? He doesn't do anything. <laughs> he doesn't do anything. Right. He's just, just there. Like, he's here to make finger paints. Pretty much. And they we serve interp- no purpose. We interpret the finger paints. Yeah. Some of them are poo. We don't know. <laughs> we don't smell the paintings. <laughs> We're not sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's the mystery. Of uh, of mid the midsummer celebration. Oh man, uh, but yeah, I I was disappointed with this because I I was extremely disappointed by this. I I was really expecting something crazy. It's and it's disappointing not in that not even in that, but it's like there's there's glimmers of like that's a like this could have been a really good movie. Yeah, and like the the there's a lot of good ideas in this, and I I like I see where you're going with this, but damn it if it's not too long too pretentious and just too overstuffed. Right. So I think I'll sum it up with my final two cents, I suppose. It's a movie where the subject matter is interesting, but the execution is lacking. But the movie does make its point, and that's basically, as I said before, that cults are dangerous and they appeal to those who are vulnerable. And in Danny's case, she gains power and decides Christian's fate and has him killed. The end. But getting there just took too long. So this was a very disappointing movie for me. Uh, Want to move on to scores? Mm-hmm. So I will give it a 2 out of 5. Yeah, I gave it a 5 out of 10. Because there are things I, I genuinely like about it. And like I will always praise A24 for like giving people like right. Ari Aster a voice. Because like, Lord knows fucking Warner Brothers or Disney will ever do it. So that's good. I just I wish the movie was better. And it, it was a good comparison to uh, Bad Times at the El Royale. Because it really did feel like a second film that a filmmaker got to make and have more control over. And thus kind of ended up being kind of bloated. Uh, and, and a little overstuffed in that regard. Yeah, so that total score is... Uh, that is a 7 out of 15. That's not great at all. Not great at all. Mm-hmm. All right, so that'll do it for our review of Gallagher Smashes Heads Now. <laughs> <laughs>